So, does anyone doubt that the economy is in crisis? This moment is an incredible moment, one in which we find both the environment and the economy in crisis. And there's really two things you do in the midst of a crisis. The first is you bury your head in the sand, you start to watch Glenn Beck, you wait for the end to come and you turn against one another. The second is that you think about how to build an economy that doesn't rely on depleting our natural resources and offers opportunity for all people. So the real question is, what type of economy do we want? And we were talking in the room and they said, lay out your bold vision for the future. So my bold vision is really simple. Everyone gets to prosper and we don't destroy the planet doing it. Now for me, it's a really personal fight. And it's a personal fight because I know what poverty feels like. And what's incredible about this moment is that so many Americans are living in poverty. They're facing losing their paychecks. They're losing their homes. And for me, you know, I grew up in a small town called Sassoon City, California. For those of you that don't know, it's famous because it's between four refineries. As you're driving down Interstate 80 in California, you hit Richmond where there's Chevron. Go further, you hit CNH where there is uh, also known as Crockett. Then you hit Fairfield where there's Anheuser-Busch. And then you've arrived in Sassoon when you'd hit Shell Refinery. And so living between four refineries is not where the best environmental health was. So when I was a kid, my mom took me to the doctor because I had asthma and allergies. And we went to the doctor, and my mom had left a, a violent relationship, had managed to buy a house on a waitress's salary. And we went to the doctor, and she really walked in, a proud single mom who'd put herself through school, bringing her child to the doctor. And we went in, and you know, we had Medi-Cal stickers, which are the green stickers you use to pay at the doctors, but that still, she still was proud. And we went to the doctor, and the doctor said, your daughter is sick because of where you live. And you need to move. Now, for my mom, moving wasn't an option. But the transformative moment for me was that I walked in with a mom proud of what she'd done, and I walked out with a parent ashamed that she couldn't take care of her child. And so the question for this room and for our movement is, can we create an economy that stops parents from having those moments? Can we be bold enough to say, that we believe an economy that represents all of us is what we should have. Now, I have to tell you, I wish I were one of those folks who just does good, but I'm not. Um, I do aspire to be, and I work on it every day. Um, but I am here really selfishly. And I'm here selfishly because I have three nieces. They have an addict mom, a dad that just got out of prison, and they still live in Sassoon City. And Shalimar, Jasmine, and Layla, they deserve better. And I'm here because I want you to join me so that my girls have a better life. So that we say to this country that we believe it's not fair that parents have to choose between their jobs and their lives. That when we see what's happening in the Gulf, what we recognize is in this moment, in this country, people still have to make a choice between their lives, their families, and putting food on the table. And that is not the best that we can do. So what do we do about it? Well, those of you who haven't yet been on the Glenn Beck board of Crime Inc. Uh, and don't realize that what happens is really nothing. And I mean, I won't talk about him because then it'll show up tonight and I don't think he's important enough. Uh, <laughs> I do want to say, so what do we do? So here's what my big idea is. My idea is that we become job warriors. We are job warriors. And what that means is that we recognize that the rights of a white coal miner in West Virginia are as critical as a Latina in South Central Los Angeles. That our movement can't just care about one group or the other that we have to be vigilant about this economy, that we have to say that every person can participate. So how do you do that? I want to give you one example that we've done in the city of Portland. 
What happened is we looked in Portland and we said, how do you create a green economy? So the first thing we did is we saw incredible investment coming from the federal government. And we said, we want that to go to the most vulnerable people, but we also want to not exploit the planet. And so we created a program that focused on quality and access. It said, how do you make sure these are good jobs that people have access to that reduce pollution? And the good news is we've reduced pollution. 46% of the people working are either people of color or women. And more importantly, the people in that community know that we care about jobs. Now, I wanted to make sure this was interactive because I know you're listening to a lot of folks. And I also know that the best spokespeople are the people themselves. So all I've asked you to be job warriors, I want you to meet two incredible warriors who've committed their lives to making change for all of us. Please meet, you'll meet Talia Williams, and you'll also meet Marquise Bryant. You see, I'm not taking as much time as everyone else is, so I don't think they're ready yet. So they're going to fast forward. Why don't you pretend I'm Elizabeth Warren and just... <laughs> Elizabeth. I was growing up in a community that was just basically like heavily polluted. And my little brother, he always had like breathing problems growing up, but I think that a lot of that come from this, from this freeway, from these trains. It's just like, it's just crazy. And we have to live here. This is where we live. This is not, there's no toxic dump. This is like my backyard. This is where we live. We need more cats from the hood to step up into leadership positions. We will be locked out of this new economy like we was locked out of the old economy. So we have opportunity right now to be a part of something bigger than we ever thought. What we do is we weatherize homes, which we go out in crews of threes and fours. So some of the things we do is weather stripping. We switch out light bulbs to energy efficient light bulbs, energy efficient shower head. We check out the boiler, make sure there's no backdrafts into the house. And what we're doing is to help cut down on carbon emissions. This is what I want to do. I want to make a career out of this. Because, you know, I'm also worried about the earth itself, you know, like, it's not going to nothing last forever. And I want to do everything I can to keep it safe for us, you know, to live. I just feel good that even though it's small, I'm doing my part. The reason we wanted to introduce you to those two folks, the reason I wanted to tell you the story of what it felt like for me to grow up, is because we want you to know, which is what you know, that not only is change is possible. This is a moment where people hope that we'll turn against one another, we'll spend the next nine months focusing on who's where, what they're doing, and how we hate one another, and who's done what, and who hasn't. Or this is a moment where we come together and say, Every person in this country deserves to support their family and live in a healthy community. And that's what this moment is about. It's about creating jobs for Talia. It's about making sure that Marquise is a community where he doesn't have to live near a freeway. And the real question is, is our movement ready for this moment? Yeah. And I have to tell you that, you know, I get to speak in a lot of places. And the reason there's two places that I wanted to be this year, and this is one of them. And the reason I wanted to be here is because I want to make sure that I translate to you how important your work is. I want to make sure that when we talk about what the vision for the economy is, we don't let ourselves be separated. That when people say, where are green jobs, that you cannot just say Portland, Detroit, Pittsburgh, and other places, but that you know the story of Talia and Marquise. And more importantly, when someone says why, that you know Shalimar, Jasmine, and Layla, and that you recognize that an economy that makes sure that those girls have opportunity is critical to what we do. You know, I've spent the last week talking about a climate bill. And I have to say, it's been a you know, week that could have been somewhat depressing. You know, you have a vision for what you think the world will be. But it also taught me a lesson, which is I, let me just say this to you, I want to blame the president because it would be so much easier. It would be so much more fun. But the reality is our movement wasn't ready. And we were ready to have a bill that compromised the Clean Air Act, so we had something. And that's just not acceptable. 
It's not acceptable when you have Shalimar, Jasmine, and Layla, and it's not acceptable when you have Marquise and Talia. So if our movement, is, our movement will be ready when we say hell no to a bill that compromises the Clean Air Act. When we say hell no to a bill that doesn't create opportunity for those folks. And, and my ask of you would be, the next couple of months, we have to push back. But our pushback can't be about who gets to be where, about whether we like people or we don't. Our pushback has to be, do Talia and Marquise's life get better? Because that's the only stick we want people to measure us by. We don't want to be measured by what someone else says. We want to make sure that a coal miner in West Virginia, that a woman in South Central, that Marquise and those folks say, my life got better because at Net Roots there was a conversation and they recommitted themselves to an economy that works. And they said that we want jobs for all people. You know, we're not going to stop thinking about how to do climate change or clean air or other things because it's not about what's said in the press. It's not about what anyone says. We recognize we're about real people. And we will measure our success by do real people's lives get better. Because I have to tell you, when I talk to my family and I say, you know, there's a problem with socks and ox and mercury and ozone and I just don't feel comfortable with this bill. Here's what most of my family tells me. Is that going to help me save my house? Am I going to make more money? Will there be more parks for my kids? Will I have unemployment insurance? And will I have access to health care? And our answer has to be, you don't have to talk about mercury and ozone right now, but what you need to know is our movement is for you. We measure our success by the improvement of your lives. And these stories have to lead, because at Green for All, it is green for all, not for some. We want everyone to have a common vision. And so what I ask you is, are we ready to make change for Marquise? Are we ready in this room? Are you ready? Yeah. You know, OK, I'm going to, I am going to go because I'm going to be on time and Jenna's going to be impressed. But what's up with the back of the room? You know what, I just, I'm not going to repeat what they said. OK, I want the front of the room to be quiet. Are we ready? So are we ready for Marquise? Are we ready for an economy that transforms all of us? I'm going to say green, and I want you to say for all. Green? For some? Green. Thank you. I want to end because I want to show you what our vision truly is. It's time to go green. We got to go green. The food ain't fresh and the air ain't from the hood to the birds, everybody go scream. Back the king, we live in your With the people that most need work, with the work that most need done. We need funds, we can harness the sun, we can harness the wind. We can create jobs for my family and friends. Now when I say I'm going green to the hood, it sound funny, but I'm talking about saving the earth and getting money. So many leaders paved the way for the leaders of today. These are shoulders that we stand on, now we all hands on. Thank you.